So the first thing we have to do uh, when we take the system out of the box, you have to hook up a serial console. In this setup, um, I've actually got a terminal server, uh, like, a, like a router set up as a, as a serial console server. So I have both the, um, the initial A fabric interconnect and the, and the B fabric interconnect here. So I'm going to start on the A side first. So the easiest thing to do when you set this up is set it up through the, through the console. Um, so we're going to go ahead and say console here. Um, the second thing is we're going to set it up as a, as a new system. So we're going to say setup. And so, by the way, you can also restore from backup. So one of the nice things about UCS is that you can take a, a backup of the, of the entire configuration and restore it uh, for disaster recovery purposes. Um, in this case, we're not going to be doing that. We're just going to set up a brand new one. So uh, we're going to say continue, yes. Um, so do we want to enforce a strong password? Now, this is new in version 1.4. So we're, we're using version 1.4 here um, on our system, which just came out recently. I'm recording this on New Year's Day of uh, 2011. Uh, and this uh, version came out uh, roughly a week ago. So um, we're going to say, um, do we want to enforce strong passwords? Yes. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is uh, enter a password for the admin account. So I'm going to go ahead and enter one. Okay, so the, the question now becomes, and this is very, very important because if this isn't done correctly, um, it leads to all kinds of problems. So the first thing you have to ask, uh, answer is whether it's going to be part of a cluster. And the overwhelming majority of installations are going to be cluster-based. So we're going to say yes. Uh, if you had a single fabric interconnect as part of a lab or something, um, then you would say no and, and run it standalone, which, by the way, can be converted to, uh, to cluster config later on. But... Uh, but uh, it's best to answer this as yes. If you're not, and you can see the default is no. So if you just hit enter on this uh, without you know really paying attention, it'll it'll lead to to issues later. Okay, so we're going to say this is the A fabric, and then the system name. Now this is very important because the, think of this as the host name for the entire pod, uh, not as an A or a B. So that's that's the important thing here. So I'm going to call this DC com west dash blb now notice i'm not putting an a or a b on it it's really important that you just put the host name of the of the system of the of the pod um, because it's going to add a dash a for the a side and a b for the b side okay now the the management address uh, of the system so this is going to be the the actual physical address that goes on the management zero port is going to be the address for this. And the net mask is going to be 255.255.255.224. And the default gateway is going to be 10.93.233.130. Okay, now the cluster address. Now this is the address that you're going to point your browser to that is going to um, take you to one or the other, whichever one's the primary uh, in terms of the fabric. So this is just the, the, the shared, you know, kind of virtual address of the cluster. So we're going to say it's 131. And I'm not going to configure any DNS. And I'm not going to configure any domain name on this. Okay. So once I answer these very basic and simple questions, right, I can apply the the configuration here and it'll come back with a prompt uh, and what I always do is I, I like to just log in to make sure I got the password correct um, once it's finished applying the configuration at the, at the CLI. Okay, so it looks like the configuration file is okay, and I should get my, my prompt. And as you can notice here, it put an A at the end of the, uh, of the, the name of the system. So um, I'm going to go ahead and log in as admin, put in the password, and it looks like everything's cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the B side. Now, in general, you're going to take your console cable and move it from the A side to the B side. In my setup, I've got a a console server, so I have the luxury of actually seeing both at once, but I'm going to go ahead and put in the console here. Now, 
because I have the redundancy cables connected on the actual system, it's very, very important that you connect the redundancy cables before you set up. And I'll, I'll definitely, uh, uh, I'll definitely go over in another video, um, which you probably watched before this, um, which is uh, how to connect everything together. But uh, before you even power the thing up, but. Uh, in any case, um, you can see here it sees the other side and will be part of a cluster, yes. And then you put in the admin password and it goes ahead and downloads the, the configuration from the other side. And the only thing you're really going to have to add here is the management zero physical inter uh, interface uh, IP address, which is right here. So this one's going to be 10, 93, Okay, and now we're done. Now, now we'll, we'll be able to actually point a, uh, a browser to the system and, and start doing the initial configuration. Um, so let's uh, uh, wait for this thing to come up and then once it's done uh, we can get started on the GUI configuration. Okay, so as you can see, I'm able to log in on both sides. Um, uh, one of the, the simple uh, troubleshooting mechanisms is you could do a show cluster uh, extended state. And, and you could see that the member state, the members are up, which is good. Um, the HA is not going to be ready until um, the actual um, chassis are, are set up and, and set up in the GUI and, and, and things like that. The good news, right, is that the systems, is, the systems are up and they're talking to each other and going through the election process. Um, so we'll, we'll see more of this. We'll come, probably come back to this uh, after we get the chassis online.